你好吗 ？Welcome and come on in. I can't wait to get started. You are not going to believe what I'm cooking up for you today. Some truly unique dishes from Singapore's Chinatown, like family-style fish with bean sprouts, colorful, and a wonderful, delicious soup named after one of my very dear friends, Mr. Fish Head. So we are going to Singapore today on Martin Yan's Chinatown. Smell very good, you know. Confucius once said, "Eating is the most important thing in life." I personally agree, and this is very true in Singapore. Singapore's Chinatown is passionate about food. To them, it's not just eating; it's entertainment. You can spend a whole day eating and shopping at the local open markets. That's because we Chinese believe eating well means living well, and I know that you also believe in eating well. And that's why I'm excited about cooking fish today and showing you Singapore Chinatown. So bring your appetite and come with me. In the shadow of Singapore's modern skyline lies historic Chinatown. Most Singaporeans are Chinese, yet there is a Chinatown. In fact, a very well-preserved one. That's because the government is making Chinatown revitalization a priority project. Singapore is a spotless city. Its wet markets are the cleanest in Asia. At the edge of Chinatown, it's one of the city's best, the Chuan Baru Market. You can find everything under the sun here, under one roof. Fresh vegetables, dry shrimp, pickled vegetables. Hmm, one of my favorites. Thousand year old egg. I can eat this every day for the next one thousand years. And of course, the seafood is the freshest. One of the local Chinatown legends is a beloved character called Mr. Fish Head. Da Men Lou means a big door. It is also the name of a successful restaurant started by the original Mr. Fish Head. The restaurant was so successful they added a hotel around it. This is just a tiny hotel, only 15 rooms, and is still run by the Tang family, second-generation fish head lovers. This is a small kitchen in a small restaurant inside a small hotel. Look at that. This is all they have, but they produce a lot of dishes here. This is the fish head. Ah,、huh? the chef cut it up a little bit. Junk, a lot of nice bone, little pieces here, and then he's going to show us how to make this famous fish head broth. Sorry, you deep fry over hot oil, right? Deep fry over hot oil until they flows and nice and golden brown. It's almost ready. Lots of Asian country use the fish head, but in Singapore, it is a local specialty. That is even a famous curry fish head in the local Indian restaurants. Something that you may not even find back in India. Let it simmer, medium heat, for about 50 minutes. Whoa! Look at the color. Look at the color. This is after almost 45 minutes. This is going to be the basics, the foundation of Mr. Fish Head's fish head broth. Whoa! Now, if you want the broth to be really truly good. 15 minutes is not enough. You got to do it hours and hours. After high heat, you let it simmer for another several hours, hours and hours. Then you got this beautiful broth that we'll use. Get some ginger sizzling in the wok. Now add pieces of fish head. Next, the broth is used to cook rice noodles. And then put it right over here. 我喺攞啲攞啲上湯嗰啲湯嚟咬，油湯嚟咬咬嗰個。When they are ready, the pieces of fish head and some Chinese greens finish off the soup. 
Whoa. This is it. This is the famous rice noodle and Chinese green in a fish head broth. Nothing goes to waste here. Here's some of the rest of the fish. Wine, water, uh, all the mushroom. All the mushroom. Then you stir fry mushroom, fry tofu cubes, add the fish. This is uh, another wonderful dish from the same fish. Huh? One fish, two dishes. I'm dining with Mr. Tang, the second generation Mr. Fish Head. His father came to Singapore with nothing more than his passion for fish heads. Over the years, his hard work and his passion pay off, and he earned the official title, Mr. Fish Head, for his specialty. Today, people from Singapore and all over the world come to Diamond Lo just for the fish head noodle soup. It is a from wretch to fish head's success story. Now, every time you use fish, particularly fresh fish, always clean them, scale them. Okay, very important. Oh, clean them all up, dry them all up a little bit so it's not slippery. Now, how can you tell a fish is fresh? First, no fishy, fishy business. Not fishy at all. That means it smells like ocean, <laughs> ocean breeze. And also, the muscle is very bouncy. You push it in, it bounces up. And also, look at the eye. Nice and clear. That is a nice, fresh fish. Look at how clear this is. And then you look at the sc scale. I mean, the gill. Oh, nice and red. That's also an indication. I'm going to do a wonderful dish. Actually, not one two dishes out of the same dish. So the first thing is, I'm gonna fillet this, okay? Cut it up. Use a sharp knife, fillet, fillet. See, very, very fast, okay? Look at this, very clean cut. That's all. See this? Nice piece of fish fillet, and then the other thing that I need is use this fish head to do another dish. And I cut this up, cut this up, okay, and set this aside, and I put it right here. And then, of course, never waste this. This is nice and fresh. Wrap it up in, in a plastic wrap, and then put it in the fridge, okay? And then in the meantime, let's fillet this. Fillet this. Hold on to this. Fillet. Push this against the cutting board at the edge, and you push, 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 and then until you have a beautiful piece of fillet like this, and then this is the fish skin. Look at this. The fish skin, what are you going to do? Don't throw them away. You sprinkle the fish skin with a tiny bit of salt and pepper and cornstarch and five spice powder, okay? In China, all the Chinese chef never, never waste anything and throw anything away. Because you use this in a number of dishes, including salad. What you do is, after you let it marinate, you dip it into this wonderful batter, just like a light tempura batter. You dip it in, and then you deep fry in hot oil, okay? Deep fry in hot oil, and then after that, you can chop it out into pieces, or you can cut into pieces first before you divide it until you get pieces like this. Look at how beautiful these pieces. Nice golden brown pieces of fish skin. We can use it in a number of dishes, okay? Or even as a snack and serve with a tiny bit of wine. This is so good. Or chop it up and put it in your salad. Now, the fish head, we're going to marinate the fish head. Marinate the fish head with a tiny bit of salt and pepper and cornstarch. Okay, in the meantime, we are going to fill, cut this up, fillet, cut it up, cut it up into beautiful pieces like this. Look at this, beautiful pieces, beautiful pieces like this fish fillet. And then you put it right here and let it marinate with a tiny bit of extra cornstarch and salt and pepper. Okay, and then you are going to pan fry 
or deep fry your fish head. Here, put a tiny, tiny bit of. So you have the fish head and the fish fillet for two different dishes. Here, I pan fry this. Put a tiny bit of green onion and ginger. Or you can actually have a big piece of ginger like this. Let me show you. Big piece of ginger, you peel it and you go, hey, whole piece of ginger, and you put it right there. And then you pan fry this fish head. Mmm, let us pan fry the fish head. Nice, make sure the heat is high enough. Can you see that? It pan fried. It doesn't take too long to do. Now, if it's the fish head is very, very big, you do it like the chef. You chop it up into big chunks. And you can either pan fry them or you can deep fry them, just like the chef. But at home, it's easier to just pan fry them, okay? Our chef and Damen Lo, they actually cut it up into pieces because the fish head is this big. When this is almost ready, we put a tiny bit of wine. Whoa, look at this. Smells so good, you know? And then when this is all nice and then all the flavor is in, now you put the water or the fish stock, either water or fish stock will fine. Put it and bring this to a boil and then simmer this for 45 minutes to 50 minutes. Mmm, be patient. Good food takes time to prepare. Look at that, after 40, 45 minutes or so, this turned milky, and it's very, very good. You can tell it's very rich. Let's taste a little bit. Whoa, wonderful. All it takes is a little bit extra salt and some fish sauce, it would be perfect. Now, we're gonna use the fish broth from the fish head to make a wonderful dish with rice noodle. Let's take a look at some of these rice noodles. You go to Chinatown, you see a lot of restaurants serve a lot of noodle. Wheat flour noodles called mean. Rice noodles fun. Today, I'm having fun with fun, a lot of fun. This is the fresh rice noodle called ho fun. And this is the rice noodle called uh, like a, a skinny rice noodle. It's called lai fun. And this is the rice stick noodle, dry. It's also rice stick noodle. This is the Vietnamese rice noodle. So you can use the fresh one or the dry one. If you use the fresh one, you don't have to worry about it, just dump it in a broth. If you use the dry one, you can parboil this in a pot of broth or water, okay? Here, this is already fresh, so we don't have to worry about it. The first thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna get rid of the fish head. We don't need the fish head because this is all the flavor already out. So we get rid of these. We don't need this anymore, okay? Oh, let us get rid of the fish head and the bone. Make sure there's no bone, okay? Now, this is all nice and ready. And then we turn the heat up a little bit more, and then we add a tiny bit of wine, extra wine, a tiny bit of extra green onion, a tiny bit of, ooh, ginger, and then also the noodle, which is already ready, it's fresh. We'll put the right in here and let it cook for a little while with the broth. And of course, if you want, if you happen to have some green vegetable, this is baby bok choy, like this, right? We're gonna cut this up and put a tiny, tiny bit of these into our broth. Now, here, and I cut this in half, and I quarter them, and I quarter them, and I also throw this in to add color contrast to our dish, okay? Chopstick is actually a very, very good, wonderful cooking utensil. You use it as a stirrer, uh, a mixer, okay? And then, of course, for color contrast, also put a tiny bit of chili. Hey, look at that. And put a tiny, tiny bit of extra ginger because the broth already started with a few pieces of ginger, so it's very gingerly flavor. And don't forget some extra, extra fish fillet. Now, in the Damen Lo, they also add the deep fried fish head, but this is better because marinated with a tiny bit of salt, this is fish fillet. We put them all in, beautiful, okay? And make sure they are nice and done. Fish fillet doesn't take too long to cook. That's the reason why a lot of people like to go to Japanese restaurants and have sushi. Don't overcook your fish. When the fish is almost ready, we're gonna serve these in this beautiful bowl. First, let us get some rice noodle. A wonderful rice noodle. Look how beautiful this is. Rice noodle. Rice noodle. This is nice and long. 
Why Chinese love long noodle? Because longevity, you see, this is just the right amount. And then I put some broth and also the fish right here. Don't overcook your fish. Beautiful. Oh, look at this. This is unbelievable. This is a little piece of green, a little piece of green. Don't overcook anything. I like to have a little red. Now, this is our wonderful, wonderful fish. Had the broth with some rice noodle. We'll put it over here and we'll show you how beautiful this is. is. Of course, do some final garnishing here. Tiny bit of green onion. Oh, a tiny bit of ah, extra piece of fish skin. I don't want to waste this. And also a tiny bit of cilantro. You know what? Here we have the fish head broth with the rice noodle. Fucking my bean sprout. Take the time. You go to fine dining Chinese restaurant, they never, never serve you the whole piece of bean sprout. They always remove the root part. Look at this. This is the root. You don't want it. Okay? See? Remove this, and then you put it here. Now, this is fine dining. We put this, pluck it, pluck it. Now, this is mung bean sprout. It's available in every single supermarket. Mung bean sprout is sprout from the mung bean. You see the mung bean? This is mung bean right here. This is, you know, the quick thing about this is you can put it in a shell for years. Uh, if it is dry. And then, of course, you can use this to make your bean sprout. At home, there's some sprouter you can buy in a health food store. Make sure after you finish this, put a tiny bit of water right here to keep it fresh if you're not using it right away, okay? Then we're going to put this right over here. We're going to have this, and then I'm going to get some ginger. This particular dish needs to have some wonderful ginger for flavoring. Wonderful. In fact, in many parts of China, in Asia, they use this as medicine. A medicinal herb help digestion and give you heat, okay? Now, at home, you can peel your ginger with a peeler, or you can use your knife to hold onto your knife like this, and you can peel your ginger like this, but it's dangerous, okay? So, we'll show you something. We use a spoon, and we'll peel the ginger like that. This is how easy it is to peel your ginger. Look at that. This way, it is safe, it is fine, and it's fun, and it's fast. You see this? See this? Everything is already peeled. Look at how clean this is. Nice and clean, like this, okay? And then, of course, you don't need this anymore. And then we set this aside. And then you cut this up and you trim this. Cut it up, cut this up, and cut this up. And you cut this up, and you cut this up, and you trim it. This, you can save it for a variety of dishes. Because you can crush the ginger like this. Look at this. This is a piece of ginger. In some of the dishes, you want minced ginger. Hey! Minced ginger is right here, okay? This is minced ginger. But since we're not using minced ginger, we want to use slice of ginger. So we trim this in a little diamond cuts like this, and then we're going to go cut, diamond cut. One, two, three, four, five, six, you see? Diamond cut, and you put it right here. And then you set it aside, and you put this right over here. And then we also have some mushroom that I want to cut up, okay? Fresh mushroom is very healthy. Eat a lot of mushroom. You see this? Mushroom. Set aside, and I put it right over here. And cut another one. Slower. Hold on to the knife. Downward, forward, downward, forward, downward, forward. See? Downward, forward. You can cut into many, many slices. Nice and thin. And use this as a spatula. Ah, how about some green onion? You need color contrast, okay? One, two, three. You see? And then, in fact, this, you can even cut it in half. Look at this. This is how I do it. Horizontal cutting. Cut it in half. And I put this right over here. Now, of course, for color contrast, I like to use some red pepper. Red pepper. This is nice. And I remove this. And I put this over here. And I cut this. You see? Look, re, look at this. You see? You see? You see? You see? You see? You see? Hey, done. And then, this is all I need. Okay? And then, what I do is... I cut this up, and I go save this, cut it in half. You don't want it to be too thick. Cut it in half, and then you go one. You see? Julian, Julian. You see that? Nice Julian pieces like this, and I put it right over here. All I need is also a tiny bit of lemon for the flavoring. 
So I cut the lemon, which I have been rolling for almost two hours. And then I use one of these. Let's use this. We don't need this anymore. Get some lemon juice for our fish, because lemon is, adds a lot of flavor to our dish. Mmm, lemon juice. Let us see. Now, this is fish fillet that we have left from the first dish. Put a tiny bit of extra cornstarch. Mmm, tiny bit of extra cornstarch, tiny bit of extra salt, and then we're going to stir fry this very fast. Put a tiny bit of oil, tiny bit of ginger, whoa, tiny bit of fish, whoa, whoa, tiny bit of wine, whoa, from beef. Isn't that exciting, huh? Doesn't take too long to cook. Never, never overcook your fish. When this is done, oh, put it right over here. You don't want to overcook your fish. And then you cook the vegetable. Beautiful. Look at that. Put your, cook your vegetable. Put a tiny bit of bean sprout. Put a tiny bit of broth or water. Mmm. This is so colorful. And then if you want, Put a tiny bit of oyster sauce. This is flavoring. The dish that will make the fish head broth. You should also use a tiny bit of fish sauce. Just a tiny bit. Mmm. That is all we have to do. Put this back. Wow, look at this. Lemon juice. Never, never forget. You know what? The whole dish is done. It is so wonderful. I want to show you how beautiful this dish can be. This is really nice. This is the whole dish. Oh, look at that, huh? I'm gonna put this right over here. You know, well, you know, this is it. I want you to try out this tasty creation at home. Now you know how easy it is to bring a little Singapore to your kitchen. Like I always say, if Yen can cook, so can you. Jai Jin, and I will see you next time.